and that's the story of how old Pecos Bill made it rain popcorn. What do you mean, tall tale? Are you calling me a liar? Oh, well, well what, what story would you like to hear? Dear Tim and Moby, I just learned that my state used to be part of Mexico. What's the deal with that? From Ernesto. You learned right. California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and parts of Wyoming and Colorado were all once Mexican territories. I know, almost two-thirds of Mexico's original holdings are now part of the United States. Most of this territory changed hands at the close of the Mexican-American War. Well, it was a two-year fight starting in 1846, but the conflict had been brewing for a while. It all started in 1835, when the territory of Texas rebelled against Mexico. Texas was part of Mexico at the time, but its people, who called themselves Texians, were mainly settlers from the United States and Europe. Along with many Mexicans, Texians were unhappy with their government. Mexico's president, General Antonio López de Santa Ana, had voided the country's constitution, making himself practically a dictator. Texas declared itself independent, and Santa Ana moved quickly to crush the rebellion, which became known as the Texas Revolution. After less than a year of fighting, the rebels, led by Texas hero Sam Houston, defeated and captured Santa Ana. Well, they made him sign the Treaties of Velasco, recognizing the Republic of Texas as an independent country. But Mexico's government refused to recognize the treaties, arguing that Santa Ana had been forced to sign. For the next ten years, the two countries engaged in constant border fights. Those clashes, plus Santa Ana's conduct in the war, whipped up American resentment against Mexico. Yeah, during the Texas Revolution, Santa Ana's army surrounded a few hundred Texian troops at the Alamo, a military fort. The Texians refused to surrender and were all killed. Remember, the Alamo became a rallying cry not just in Texas, but across America. Then there was the issue of manifest destiny, the belief of many Americans that the country was meant to expand to the Pacific Ocean. It was just a matter of time before America's ambition to span the continent butted up against the fact that a huge chunk of it was still owned by Mexico. It all came to a head in 1845 when the U.S. admitted Texas as its 28th state. Knowing that the new border was disputed, President James K. Polk sent troops to the Rio Grande. They were led by General and future President Zachary Taylor. Meanwhile, Polk offered Mexico up to $30 million for the California and New Mexico territories. Mexico refused the offer and sent soldiers to a spot just across the river from General Taylor's army. Within weeks, fighting broke out and the U.S. Congress declared war. Some opposed the war, including a young congressman named Abraham Lincoln. But most Americans, and Mexicans too, were ready for a fight. The American strategy was to take the war to Mexico. General Taylor and General Winfield Scott easily overran key cities throughout the country. The war ended on February 2, 1848, with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Mexico recognized the Texas border and gave up a huge tract of land known as the Mexican Cession. In return, the U.S. paid Mexico $15 million and forgave $3 million in debt. Five years later, the Gadsden Purchase, a $10 million land sale, moved the Mexican-American border to where it is today. Yeah, it was controversial then, too. Some say the U.S. bullied a weaker country into war. Others say that Mexico could have avoided the conflict if it had acted responsibly. Instead of negotiating a deal with America, Mexican leaders were busy fighting among themselves. Either way, the war cost tens of thousands of lives and permanently damaged relations with Mexico. But it also gave America the land it needed to build a great nation. There's no real answer to who was right and who was wrong. Most of the time, history isn't that simple. Yes. Yes, I am fine with that. <laughs>